Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. One of my favorite summer activities is herping. So I'd like to talk to you about our recent herping excursion. First of all, I'll mention that locally, we can actually do a lot of herping right near our house. We have a lot of snakes in this area. There are the uh, wandering garter snakes. We have the Great Basin gopher snakes. We have Great Basin rattlesnakes. We've got the yellow bellied racers. And we've got lots of lizards too. There are whiptails, um, fence lizards, side blotch lizards, horned lizards, lots of things like that. We've got a couple of different species of frogs, including the invasive bullfrogs in this area. And then invertebrates of all different types, of course. Anything from the desert darkling beetles to velvet ants, even tarantulas, just right up in the hills here, a uh, five minute drive from our house. So herping locally is pretty fun and we've done quite a bit of that uh, this spring and summer. But in the southwestern corner of my state is the northeastern corner of the Mojave Desert. And so we took a trip down there a few weeks ago. Fortunately, social distancing when you're herping out in the desert is actually pretty easy to do. So as a part of this trip, the first part of the trip, uh, we were challenged by Mini Beasts Canada, another YouTuber, to participate in the rock flipping challenge. Basically how this works is that we were to go out and flip five rocks and share whatever we found under the rocks. And then after that, we could share other things we found on the trip. Okay, so the rules for rock flipping are uh, pretty important. The first rule is that when you're flipping, you need to flip so that the underside of the rock faces away from you, so that if there's anything aggressive um, that you've disturbed under the rock, that you have the rock between you and whatever the creature is. Um, and sorry about the airplanes if you can hear that. Um, and then you also need to make sure that you put the rock back carefully where it was so you're not disturbing habitat uh, unduly that um, you know you haven't destroyed the homes of uh, whatever was under the rock when you flipped it and i think those are the two maybe most important rules of rock flipping so um, we went out to an area in the javi desert a hillside with a little wash a lot of times a wash uh, is, a, is a nice place to find things and we flipped some rocks so let's see what we found So one of the first things that we noticed out here tonight are just roaches. I don't know what species of roaches they are, but they're definitely roaches of some kind. And here is a cricket of some kind. It does look a lot like a house cricket, doesn't it? I'm not sure. They're going to get run over. We looked for scorpions and we saw several things fluoresce, but they all turned out to be scraps of plastic or fabric or whatever. Oh, lizard. Okay, so I'm just about to participate in the rock flipping challenge. Here is rock number one. Let's see what we get, if anything. You ready? Mm -hmm. huh. Nothing. I don't see anything. Get some little burrows under there. So there's probably something that's deep underground right now. So I'll put that one back. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Once again, not seeing a lot going on there. Oh, it's a double rock. Hmm. That's kind of fun. Let's, let's do this one under here. That looks pretty set in there. Oh, there you got it. Um, yeah, that one. So as you can see, the results of this particular rock flipping excursion were not great. And part of that is probably just due to the fact that it was very, very hot and dry at the time. Daytime temperatures were about 108 degrees. And of course, when we were flipping these rocks, it was earlier in the morning when it was a little cooler, but still very, very hot and dry. And um, in this area, at other times of the year, we've found a lot of things. But this particular uh, expedition was not so great for rock flipping on this morning. I did actually find a lizard or two during that same morning, but we didn't catch any of that on film, unfortunately. But I do want to share what we did find because the trip itself, the entire excursion was much more fruitful than just this rock flipping 
expedition. Uh, so some of the species we found we've never even seen before. So let's talk a little bit about that. So on this trip, a few things we wanted to see and that live in this area included desert tortoises, chuckwallas, banded geckos, and Gila monsters. And uh, two years ago, when we visited one of these spots that we, we visited this, these past few weeks, uh, we did actually see a couple of desert tortoises, and that was the first time we had ever seen them. We found two of them. One was just near the trail on a little hillside, and the other one was actually right in the middle of the trail. So that was great. We were able to see those a couple of years ago, and we knew that we had to go early in the morning when it wasn't too hot because that's the best time to see the tortoises in general, but we didn't see any this time. But on this very same hike, we did see some cool stuff, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, Reptile-wise, we did see a lot of things. We saw some Chiloporus magister, which is the desert spiny lizard. There are a lot of those. They're a fairly large lizard with a prominent dark collar around the neck. Very, very common in the area we were in and something we don't see as far north as we actually live. Uh, we saw a lot of side blotched lizards, which you can find uh, more locally here. And we found a couple of young swifts. Now, um, they're in the genus Chiloporus as well, but they're much smaller. Uh, species and we can find those locally but it was fun to see a couple of uh, juveniles of this species one of them which was uh, climbing on my daughter's shoe which was kind of fun okay here is a plant that is not attached to the ground anymore it looks like a yucca of some sort I'm gonna lift this up because we saw that underneath it was a very small lizard so it must be actually in is that it? a Oh. There's the little lizard. Right that now. is tiny. Oh, there hey, he dude. goes. Here's a little guy that was under that bush there that had been uprooted. A very small. Looks like it's either a sagebrush lizard or a, a bluebelly swift style lizard, a Chiloporus, or a sagebrush lizard, one or the other. But this is a very tiny guy. As you can see here, my finger is less than an inch from him. It's probably about a quarter of an inch from him. I'm just about touching him. You can see he's a very, very small lizard indeed. The second of those that we've seen this morning. But pretty beautiful little guy. I think one of the highlights of our reptilian encounters was actually with a species that wasn't particularly unusual. It was a whiptail. But this was an interesting thing. This was adjacent to a reservoir and we noticed this whiptail was doing something a little bit strange. The way it was moving its head, touching the rocks was a little bit strange until we realized that it was actually, uh, it was nibbling on gnats. There were gnats all over these rocks. It was very close to the water's edge and it was just picking off these little gnats off the, the surface of the rocks. And I thought well, that was very interesting. I'd never seen anything quite like that before. And then we actually saw it come right up to the edge of the reservoir and take a drink. So that was, that was kind of an interesting thing. I think one of my favorite things about herping is watching the behaviors of the creatures. In many cases, I'm not actually trying to catch anything. I just want to see it and see how it's acting in nature. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, as far as amphibians go, we did see some amphibians. There were quite a few tadpoles and toadlets right alongside the Virgin River. And these, these tadpoles and toadlets were in various stages of development. Some of them were basically still tadpoles with maybe a little bit of back leg development. Some of them had their front legs and back legs. And then some of them were just little toadlets that had lost their tail entirely. So that was fun to see. Uh, they were about the size of my uh, fingernail, something like that. So very tiny, very cute little creatures. Before we go any further, I really want to give a shout out to our backers at Patreon. I'm really excited that our Patreon family is growing and uh, I can't stress enough how much you do to help keep this channel going, especially in these times when things are a little uncertain and a little more difficult than normal. So thank you very much for all of your support. Well, before I talk about the invertebrates, and there were some pretty cool invertebrates I got to see this time, uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of the creatures I didn't actually get on film. Uh, we did pass a herd of pronghorn, probably the biggest herd of pronghorn I've ever seen. 
Uh, and I do see herds of them fairly often when I'm driving through the desert, but this was a very large herd of pronghorn with a lot of young juveniles, which was pretty cool. I don't know if I'd seen one uh, herd that close of that size before, pretty cool. And then I actually saw a ringtail. And if you don't know what a ringtail is, it is a relative of the raccoon. It's in the same family as raccoons. They're really interesting creatures. And this one came quite close to me in the dark. And unfortunately, I didn't turn on my camera. I should have. But it was close enough to me that its uh, eyes shone in the um, flashlight that I was holding. And it came probably within six or eight feet of me, which was pretty cool. The, its long tail was very visible in the dark. And it was... Uh, Pretty cool experience. It's nice to see a creature you've never seen before. But now let's talk about the inverts, the invertebrates that I saw. One evening we decided to go black lighting for scorpions specifically. Um, we were really excited about that. I've found quite a few scorpions in the wild before, mostly flipping rocks, and I had never actually gone black lighting for scorpions. I've had a flashlight to do so for some time, but uh, so we decided to do this and we went to a new site site again out in the Mojave Desert where we hadn't been before and we were really excited to do this I went with my wife and two of our kids and when we went out the first thing we found was roaches there were a lot of roaches out there and I thought great the prey of the scorpions is out so we're likely to see scorpions I also saw crickets again something that the uh, scorpions would be attracted to and eat but actually with the black light I could tell the black light was working because we found several objects fluorescing brightly but they all turned out to be false alarms they were bits of plastic or bits of fabric or whatever so that was kind of sad we had really expected to see some we saw bats that evening we saw a large sphinx moth in addition to the roaches and crickets but absolutely no scorpions we did eventually find a scorpion however on the last day, I was flipping some rocks and encountered this very, very tiny scorpion. Now, to put this in perspective, this is a two-ounce deli cup here. So this scorpion, with its tail stretched out, was probably no more than a centimeter and a half long. It was very, very diminutive. And I wasn't sure entirely which species it was. There are quite a few species that live in the southwestern part of my state, and one of them is um, the Arizona bark scorpion, which is fairly venomous and can be medically significant. And because it habitually curls its tail to the side and this scorpion was doing some of that, I wasn't sure of the identification. We decided to release it rather than collect it. So I did that, but it was fun to have found it at any rate. And hopefully next time we go, I mean, I've been places where I've been herping and found a scorpion under almost every rock and I'm not sure why this particular trip was not very fruitful in terms of scorpions but uh, that's okay I was happy to find one now another invertebrate I was hoping to find was Scolopendra polymorpha the desert tiger scorpion now last year I found dozens upon dozens of these they were all over the place I flipped so many of them and it was great but that was in April when the weather is cooler and after there has been more rain typically at that time of year and so they were everywhere usually at this time of the year it's a little more difficult to find them unless there's been a recent rain because they tend to retreat deeper underground when it gets dry because centipedes actually dry out fairly easily they adapt to the desert by living in a microclimate underground where it's more humid so we didn't actually see a single centipede that is the first time in a while, I've gone uh, down to this area and not found any Scolopendra polymorpha at all. Uh, but we did see some other interesting things. There were uh, a lot of dragonflies around that were pretty cool. And I found this freshly molted uh, damselfly right at the uh, shoreline of the reservoir. And uh, another type of invertebrate we were really excited about going to see were thistledown velvet ants. If you've never seen a thistledown velvet ant, they're pretty amazing because they're white and extremely fluffy. And my cousin, who I mentioned before on the channel, is an entomologist who does a lot of research projects with velvet ants specifically, including thistledown velvet ants. And so he's been in this area a lot and he pinned some locations, a couple of locations that we could visit where he had seen um, thistledown velvet ants very recently. So 
we visited one of these sites. I actually wanted to visit two, but we weren't able to visit both of the sites. But we did visit one of them, and we found the habitat of the velvet ants. We found the creosote bushes that are often found in the same areas that the, the velvet ants are found in. Uh, and we looked around. We did find some reptiles and things like that. But we didn't see a single velvet ant. However, we did see this silver creosote weevil, which is apparently found in association with creosote bushes. And it was kind of a cool find. It's something I'd never seen before. And I'm always excited to see a creature, whether it's an invertebrate, reptile, amphibian, whatever, that I've never seen before. So that was a lot of fun. And another bright side to this situation of not actually finding any thistle down velvet ants is that my cousin, like I said, he had been there just a day or two before we had visited that spot. And he actually gave me the two thistle down velvet ants that he collected. So now I have them and I'm really excited about them. They're absolutely fantastic. And in the future, we're going to be doing a collaboration video. So watch for that because he knows a lot about velvet ants since that's his, uh, one of his specialties. He, uh, is he focuses on things like solitary wasps and bees with specific reference to velvet ants. So watch for that video, it's coming up. Uh, probably the most exciting invertebrate that I found on this trip was at a place called Red Cliffs Reserve. It's the same place where we had seen desert tortoises in the, in the past and a lot of other reptiles and things like that. Um, we were walking along the trail in the morning. It was just around 8 o'clock in the morning, I think. Uh, and we had been there for about an hour, an hour and a half, something like that already. And what should I see on the trail? But a blue death fainting beetle, something I've never seen before in the wild. I've been working on a breeding project for the species for some time, but this was the first one I had ever found in the wild. So I was very excited to see it. And it was actually eating when I first found it. it, was nibbling on some sort of plant material, which was pretty cool. And because it was a reserve, I didn't collect it. And even if it hadn't been a reserve, since there was only one there, I probably wouldn't have felt particularly comfortable about collecting it because I, I generally want to collect something if I know it's abundant in that area. Uh, but because it was a reserve, it was not allowed to collect anything. So I did not collect it. I just was content to take some video and photos of it, but very cool. Uh, probably the most, like I said, the most exciting invertebrate encounter that I had on this particular trip. Now, the original plan for this trip was to meet up with Peter of Bugs in Cyberspace. And we were really excited to do it, but we started making that plan well before COVID-19 did what it did. And so uh, we decided instead, for health and safety reasons, of course, to collaborate uh, on Zoom instead, and we made our video about the uh, orchid mantis, the best pet invertebrate. So you can check that out. I'll put a, a link to that here, and uh, if you haven't seen that. And we also plan to meet in the future. Once COVID-19 is finished and, and we're able to uh, meet freely, we're going to do another collaboration. So maybe next year, something like that. But I would like to challenge Peter, if he would like to do it, to participate in the rock flipping challenge and uh, in a future video sometime this summer and uh, see what he finds. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. All right, everybody, this is the first blue death painting beetle I have ever encountered in the wild.